This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this very simple vector infinite loop icon using Adobe Illustrator. So we'll go ahead and get started here in Illustrator. I'm going to open up a new document, and I'm just going to use a custom size, and I'm going to make this uh, 1280 by 1280 uh, in pixels, and go ahead and create. Uh, click Create, and there we have our new artboard. And in order for us to just make sure we're all working on the same page, I'm going to instruct you to set up your document just like I have mine set up here. The first thing we'll do is go to view. We're going to have uh, snap to pixel. We're going to turn that off. Uh, snap to point. We want that turned on. And if yours has smart guide selected, go ahead and turn that off as well. And then we'll go over to window. And if you notice here, these are three little panels I have open. If you go to window, you click on align and then color and then gradient you will have these three panels open like I do. Although for you, they may be three separate panels. You could just click and drag them together to form one unit like that. And with that, we should be all set to get started. Uh, well, when I wanna go over here to where it says colors, I wanna set this foreground color to black. And I wanna take the stroke color over here and just click that red slash to turn that off. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a square. So come over here to where it says square, uh, the rectangle tool and click on that. If yours doesn't have the rectangle there, you could just click and hold on that and it'll give you the list of shapes to choose from. Just go ahead and choose rectangle. And I'm gonna hold Alt and Shift on the keyboard and click and drag to create a perfect square like that. And whatever size that square is, come up here to where it says the, the, uh, either the width or the height icon and turn on this lock icon and just double click on that number right there and hit Control C on your keyboard to copy that value, whatever that is. And now we're going to click and hold over that rectangle icon and come down to uh, ellipse tool. We're going to create an ellipse. And we're going to double click the uh, color black right here. And we're just going to change this to red. Go ahead and click OK. And then we'll hold Alt and Shift and click and drag on the keyboard to create a perfectly round circle like that. And then we'll change this one to black. So we'll double click this color and just bring this down to the far lower left corner and click OK. We want to make this circle the same width and height that this square is. So we'll come over here to where it says width and just double click that and hit control V on your keyboard to paste that in and hit enter. And then what we want to do is grab the, uh, the selection tool and uh, click and drag over both of those objects. And down here in the align menu where it says align to, select artboard, align to artboard, and just align it horizontally and vertically like that. And they should be lined up as you see here on my screen. And after we've done that, we can click off of the graphics to deselect everything. So what I wanna do now is click on just the black circle right here and select that. And come over here to where it says the pen tool, click and hold on that and come down to select add anchor point tool. And I wanna zoom in over this bottom right corner by holding alt and rolling up the, uh, the mouse wheel. And what I wanna do is I wanna click right here on the edge of this black circle to put a new node in there. And then I want to come over here to where it says direct select tool and click on just that node right there. And I want to come up here to where it says convert, uh, no, I'm sorry, this one right here, convert selected anchor point to a corner. Go ahead and click on that. And then I want to hold control on the keyboard and click and drag. No, I'm sorry. You know what? Take this node here, click on just that node, make sure to click on that. So just that node selected and click and drag that into the corner and snap, uh, snap it into the corner right there, just like that. And we could zoom out a little bit by holding Alt and rolling down the mouse wheel. We could take, uh, we can go back to the uh, select tool, take this red square and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And now we have, I'm gonna zoom out a little more, we have this little shape here. What I wanna do now is rotate this shape around. So we'll go to the rotate tool and just start to rotate this around so it's sitting vertically like that. But we're gonna hold shift on the keyboard while we're doing that so it locks it onto uh, these axes like that. And we wanna set it so it's locked perfectly vertical like that. So we end up with this point going on the, I mean, horizontally like that. So what we'll do now is we wanna add a stroke to this. So we'll uh, come over here and click on this drop down with this red slash. And I'm just gonna give this a red stroke. And I'm gonna click on the black right here and I'm just gonna turn the fill off. And I'll come over here to the stroke tab and I'm gonna double click that number one. I'm gonna change that to 75 and hit enter and see how that looks. That's pretty good. Maybe I'll make that a little thicker. I'll try maybe 100. Okay, that should work. And what I'll do now is I'll go back to the select tool. And with this selected, I'm gonna to go to uh, object, path, outline stroke. And that's gonna turn that object into a stroke 
uh, it's going to turn that stroke into an object like that. So what I'll do now is I'll take the opacity of this and bring this down about in half and click off of that to deselect everything. And I want to take this ob I want to take this object and make a duplicate of it. So I'm just going to hold alt and click and drag on it to create a duplicate of it like that. And what I want to do now is just rotate this around. So I'll go back to the rotate tool and just click and drag on it to start to rotate it and then hold shift to lock it onto the horizontal axis like that. And then I'll go back to the select tool, hold control, grab this node and snap it onto this corner right here, this inside corner of the other red object. So we have both of these objects lined up like this. And once we've done that, we can click and drag over both of those and we can unify them together by coming down here to where it says Pathfinder and click on this button that says uh, Unite. Go ahead and click that. Then we could hold Alt and Shift and just grab one of these corners right here and scale that down a little bit so it's not so big. I'll put this closer towards the page. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring the opacity of this all the way up. So I'll click on the opacity slider and just bring that all the way up. Click off of that to deselect everything. And I'm gonna make this just a, I'm just gonna make this a shade of light gray for now. So just double click that, that drag this over to the left and choose like a shade of light gray. That's pretty good. And then I'll come over to the rotate tool and I'll just rotate this. I'll start to rotate this around. I'll hold shift until it rotates so it's sitting like that so that this little connecting segment is going perfectly vertical and perfectly horizontal like that. And then I want to hold alt and roll up the mouse wheel to zoom in on the center of this object. And after we've rotated that around, what I want to do is grab the direct, uh, grab the select tool and just click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And then we'll come over here to the pen tool, hold, click and hold over the uh, direct select tool so it brings up this little fly out menu. Just grab the pen tool from that window right there. And I want to create a point going right at this corner right here. Click and then bring this line over to this corner and click and then over this corner and over to here and then back to the starting point so we end up with this little square like that. And then I want to grab the select tool and just click and drag this up to here. I'm going to hold control and grab this lower left corner and snap it onto this corner right here. And then I want to give this a gradient. So I'm going to come over to the gradient tool. Actually, you know what? First, let's go to this, the, uh, uh, let's take this center node right here and just click and drag this up a little bit to make that longer like that. That's, that's pretty good. We want it to go just short of where this curve begins. That's a pretty good height right there. And then we'll go to the gradient tool. And from this drop down, we'll choose linear. And your gradient selection may be different from mine. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, double click this stop right here and just make sure that this is black. Just choose black. We want 100% opacity, then click out of that. And then we can double click this stop right here. And we want this to be black as well. But then we want to take the opacity of this and set this to 0%. And then we can click out of that to get rid of it. And what we want to do now is go to the gradient tool. And if you bring the cursor to the right of the gradient tool, you'll notice a little rotate icon up here. And once that rotate icon appears, just rotate that around and then hold shift so it locks onto the vertical axis like this, like that. And now what we could do is we could take this uh, circle node and just click and drag this up to about here, right beneath the bounding box of that blue shape right there. And then we could take this node here at the bottom and just click and drag that down to about there. And then we can go to the select tool and I'm going to take the opacity of that and bring that down just a little bit so it isn't so abrupt. And what I'll do now is I want to duplicate this. So I'm going to hold alt and, and uh, I'm going to hold alt and click on it like that to create a duplicate copy. And I want to rotate this around. So I'll grab the uh, rotate tool over here and just wrote, start to click and drag to rotate it around and hold shift. So we lock it onto the vertical axis, go back to the select tool, hold control, click and drag this node right here and snap it into the corner right there, just like that. And then we could hold alt and roll down the mouse wheel. So we could zoom out and see what we have here. If, as you notice, it's starting to come together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag over everything, go back to the rotate tool and just rotate it around, then hold shift to lock it onto the horizontal axis like that. And then we can go back to the select tool and just move this towards the center of the page. To move the page around, you can just hold down the space bar and click and drag, and that'll let you move around the canvas like that. And I'd say right there, that looks pretty good. The final step would be to add a little gradient to the actual the, the actual loop icon itself. So let's click off of that to deselect everything. Let's click on just that gray infinite loop icon. And from the gradient tab, we'll give that a linear gradient. And I'm going to double click this stop right here. I'm going to make this uh, maybe like a 
uh, a gray on the darker end of the spectrum, maybe over here like that. Click out of that, and then double click this, and set this back to 100%, and then take this dropper and set it to maybe like a lighter gray, almost white, not quite white, but almost, maybe like that, and click out of it. And you might want to just go back and adjust this a little bit, so it isn't so... There we go, that looks pretty good. And what we could do now is take the uh, gradient tool, and again, bring the cursor to the outside of this square node until we get the rotate tool, the, the rotate icon, and then click and drag, and then hold shift to lock it so it runs parallel with the edge of this, uh, this leg of the uh, infinite loop icon right here. And then we could take this node and just bring that up, bring that up to about there. Take this node, bring that down a little closer to the graphic, bring this up a little more. And you could adjust it as you see fit. I think that looks pretty good right there. I'll go back to the select tool, click off of it to deselect everything. And as you can see, we have created our infinite loop icon. Now you might wanna click on these, click on that, hold shift, click on the other one, make them a little darker. You can go back and adjust them as you see fit. But I think for now, that should do it for this tutorial. That's how you can create a simple vector infinite loop icon using Illustrator. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.